Hi, I'm John Erickson, the manager of the Hoffman Estates Branch Library, and I'm here to announce an exciting new program. Starting in the fall, we're going to have a monthly story time with the mayor. Come in and meet the mayor and listen to some great, colorful, and exciting stories. Uh, further details will follow in the library's program guide and on the village's website. See you then. Okay, we're here at the Branch Library on Hassel Road to do some reading to members of the public and young people in particular. So before we get started, I'm the mayor of Hoffman Estates. Do you know what that means? What does a mayor do? Basically what your, your local village government does is we do public health and safety. That means we make sure there's police if you need police. We have a fire department and paramedics in case you have a medical emergency or some sort of fire. The public works department maintains the roads. They also maintain the water system and the sewer system and make sure when you turn the faucet on that good drinking water comes out and when you flush the toilet, that stuff goes where it's supposed to go. That's the major focus of our, of, of our village. We also uh, have a code department that they inspect buildings and if someone is building a house or doing an improvement or building a shopping center or some sort of office building, they come out and make sure that everything is done right that the building will be safe. And we have a health and human service department that does, uh, they do counseling, they give inoculations. You go to the village hall right before school starts and you'll see hundreds of kids there, so. But that's public health and safety is our major focus. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun being mayor. The great thing with the local government is that we directly serve everybody, whether you live in town, you drive through town, you staying in a hotel for a few days, you work in town, we provide direct services. And also we live in the community, so we're very easily accessible. People can find you very easily. And we don't have the layers of uh, people in between us and the people we represent that you might have in Congress and the federal government and all that. So it's a blast. I've enjoyed it immensely. But here, we're here to do some reading. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. You think it's a good idea to let a pigeon drive a bus? I don't know. The pigeon might drive a bus better than I do. <laughs> Hi, I'm the bus driver. Listen, I've got to leave for a little while so you can watch things for me until I get back. Thanks. Oh, and remember, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. <laughs> What's the pigeon doing on the bus? The pigeon saying, I thought he'd never leave. Hey, can I drive the bus? Yeah. No. Please, I'll be careful. I tell you what, I'll just steer the bus. My cousin Herb drives the bus almost every day. Do you believe that? Does Herb drive your bus to St. Peter's? <laughs> True story, he does drive the bus. Vroom, 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 vroom. Hope he doesn't drive it that fast. Pigeoned at the wheel. No? I never get to do anything. Do you say that? No? Hey, I've got an idea. Let's play drive the bus. I'll go first. Come on, just once around the block. I'll be your best friend. How about I give you five bucks? No fair. I bet your mom would let me. Would you, ma'am? <laughs> What's the big deal? It's just a bus. I have dreams, you know. Fine. Let me drive the bus. <laughs> That's supposed to shout in the library, I guess. <laughs> He's stewing a little bit there. I'm back. The bus driver said, you didn't let the pigeon drive the bus, did you? Great. Thanks a lot. Uh-oh. Now the pigeon's a little bit concerned there. Bye. 
Look at the poor pigeon. He's upset. Hey! Ooh, now he's thinking about driving a semi. Think that's better? At least you wouldn't be on a semi. You might be more likely to be on a bus. So the poor pigeon didn't get to drive the bus or the semi, I gather. That's very unfortunate. Got another one, John? Yeah, we used to do, uh, it's, uh, depending on time, we used to do two or three. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so we got another, that may be another Mo Williams. Then that's, yeah, then that's baguette. It's French. <laughs> Today is the day Nanette gets to the baguette. Is she set? Nice little town there, huh? A lot like Hoffman Estates. Yeah. Nanette! Today in the kitchenette, Mom tells Nanette that Nanette gets to get the baguette. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a song. See that? Begin the begin. <laughs> baguettes are warm, baguettes smell wonderful. Getting to the baguette is Nanette's biggest responsibility yet. Is Nanette set to get the baguette? You bet. She's ready. But on the way, Nanette sees Georgette and Suzette and Brett with his clarinet. Look, there's Mr. Barnett with his pet, Antoinette. Nanette pats Antoinette. Did Nanette forget the baguette? <laughs> this is a great story. Got a jet. I've got a baguette to get, says Nanette to the quartet. Baker Juliet has met Nanette. She knows it is Nanette's first baguette get. So Juliet gets Nanette the best baguette yet. Nanette, did you get the baguette? You begin the begin. You bet. The baguette is warm. The baguette smells wonderful. And there's sure a lot of it. Crack. The baguette is warm, the baguette tastes wonderful, and there's still a lot of it. Which is everybody get home with it. Crack! The baguette is still warm. The baguette still tastes wonderful. And there's still some of it. Can Annette stop tasting the baguette? Not yet. Crack, 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 crack. Mmm. Oh, no! There is no more baguette. Nanette begins to fret. Will Mom be upset? Will Mom regret she let Nanette get the baguette? Kaboom! I must, uh, I must be carrying a grudge about this. Now Nanette is wet. Wet with no baguette. This is as bad as it can get. Nanette wishes Mom had never let Nanette get that baguette. Maybe Nanette will move to Tibet. You never wanted to move to Tibet, did you? You ever anything that bad that you figured you had to move to Tibet? No. I'm smiling, so it's got to be the case. Tibet is as far away as you can get. Nanette would need a jet. Can Nanette go home instead? Can Nanette face her mom? What will she do? What would you do? Did you go home? Yeah, mom would forgive you. Where is the baguette, Nanette? asked Mom. Did you forget? Nanette did not forget. Nanette is upset. Nanette is beset with regret. She sweats. I ate the baguette! Ooh. Oh, sweetie. Mom hugs Nanette. It is warm. It is wonderful. Like a million baguettes. The day's not over yet, Nanette, says Mom. Let's reset. Yes, let's. What a nice mom. A lot like your mom. Very nice. Baker Juliet is surprised to see Nanette, but not too surprised. Nanette's mom gets another baguette. Now they are all set. Mom, Nanette, and a baguette. The baguette is warm. The baguette smells wonderful. I think she's going to eat the whole thing again? I don't know. Crack! Today is the day that Nanette will not forget. Mom! Mom ate it. 
Mom gobbled up that one. Well, Mom was entitled, don't you think? <laughs> got another one, Jen? Yeah, I got another Doing an excellent job, right? Every bunny or grumpy duck. What's your preference? Grumpy duck. Grumpy duck it is. Grumpy duck. Eh, doesn't look too grumpy there. A little serious looking here. Duck is in a very grumpy mood. The pond is dry. And she doesn't want to participate in any of the other animals' activities. To make matters worse, a gray cloud is following her around. Is there anything her friends can do to make her feel better? Or is grumpiness catching? You think grumpiness is catching? If your sister's grumpy, are you grumpy? <laughs> Duck was feeling grumpy. The pond was so dry, so she couldn't paddle in it. She had no one to play with. A little gray cloud appeared over her head. Ever have a gray cloud come over your head? No? That's good. You don't get grumpy either, do you? <laughs> Mom's laughing. She waddled over to Dog, who was digging a hole. I've got no one to play with, she said to Dog. You can play with me, said Dog, if you like digging holes. I don't, grumped Duck. Digging holes would make my feathers dirty. Uh-huh, Dog sighed. The little gray cloud got bigger. Pig was rolling in the mud. I've got no one to play with, Duck said to Pig. Come and play with me, said Pig, in my gloopy puddle. No thanks, grumped Duck. Ducks like water, not gloop. Oink, honked Pig. The little gray cloud got even bigger. It's gonna be a tough day, this Duck. I feel sorry for the Duck. <laughs> Rooster was cock-a-doodling. I've got no one to play with, said Duck. You can play with me if you like, said Rooster. We could sing a cockle-doodle-doo chorus. I don't do cock-a-doodling, grumped Duck. Squawk, said Rooster. The little gray cloud got bigger still. I think the Duck is making himself grumpier, don't you? Rabbit was hopping around. I've got no one to play with, said Duck. Come and hop with me, said Rabbit. You can... We can see who can hop the highest. You can, silly, grump duck. I'm not silly, said Rabbit. The little gray cloud wasn't little anymore. It was big. That was a big cloud. Tortoise was dozing in his shell. I got no one to play with, said Duck, tapping his shell with her beak. You can doze with me, said Tortoise. It's very peaceful. Boring, more like, grump duck. Tut, tutted towards. Now the gray cloud was huge. Cheer up, duck, said goat, who was busy eating the washing on the line. I've got no one to play with, said duck. Share a snack with me, said goat. Here's a tasty t-shirt. I'm munching away in the t-shirt. I wouldn't be happy if you ate your t-shirt, would you? Ducks don't eat clothes, grump duck. And neither should goats. You've got a stomach ache. Oh, will I? grumbled Goat. Now the great gray cloud was ginormous. It was a great gray blob hanging low overhead. So now all the animals were grumpy. That duck started something. Then something strange began to happen. The great gray cloud turned blue and purple and yellow until it was black. That's scary. Black cloud. Sitting beneath this ginormous black cloud were a dog who stopped wagging his tail, a pig whose ears were droopy, a rooster who was no longer cockadoodling, a rabbit had lost his hop, a tortoise who had decided to stay in his shell forever and ever, a goat who scowled at the big black cloud, and a duck who was still grumpy. That duck. What sort of cloud was it? Was it a gloom cloud? or a mood cloud? Could it be, was it, a grumpy duck cloud? Would it blot out the sun forever? Could it burst? Yes! Suddenly there was a splat, plop, plink, plitter plat, dribble. Now everybody's getting wet, they got something to be grumpy about, huh? Millions of big shiny wet 
splashy raindrops. Oh, those raindrops. Duck spread her wings wide open. She splished and splashed and splashed. Duck wasn't grumpy anymore. I'm waddling in the rain. Quack, quack, she sang. So ducks like getting wet. We don't like getting wet, do we? Nah. Woof, woof, oink, oink, bleat, cock-a-doodle-doo, hip-hop, quack, quack, slurp, slurp. One by one, they all joined in. I'm plopping in the rain, oink, oink. I'm barking in the rain, woof, woof. I'm cock-a-doodling in the rain. I'm hopping so high, hip-hop. I'm drinking up the rain, slurp, slurp. What a glorious feeling, bleated goat. We're happy again, just waddling and paddling by the pond. They all sang in chorus, and where was a big black cloud? They went from grumpy to happy. Gone in his place was a bright, shining rainbow. Isn't that pretty? I like rainbows. The end. <laughs> maybe Mary, if you don't mind, maybe hungry. Yeah, hungry. Hungry, hungry sounds good. We all get hungry. Have you met the mayor yet? How are you? Beth Tomev's little girl. Oh, hey, how are you? Friend. You know best. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. well, Very that, nice. That's an orange minza. When oh, it's yeah. peeled, like it's doing. Whoa, Ooh. that's pretty cool. Ooh. Do you like bunnies? Yeah. Okay. Hungry bunny. Well, this is right up your alley if you like bunnies. We got a hungry bunny here. Bunny is hungry. Luckily, bunny has you. Grab bunny scarf, the red ribbon that comes with the book to help bunny climb to new heights and pick those tasty apples. Rock the book back and forth and turn the book round and round for a roller coaster adventure on the way home. Just don't upset the apple cart. Hungry bunny, here I come. Hungry bunny. Can you hear my tummy rumble? I'm one hungry bunny. Is your tummy rumble like that? Rumble? It's time for a red, delicious, and hard to reach apple. Bunny's not tall enough to get that apple. My sister's tall. Your sister's tall enough? She can get the apple for you. That's good. It's good to have a tall sister. Maybe you could help. Could you please shake the book so the apples fall down? Time to get that apple. Not the leaves. Could you blow them away? That's much better. Thank you. So those leaves are blown away. Oh no. My scarf is blown away too. I'm stuck in the book and I'm still hungry. Oh, his scarf got caught in the tree. Oh, what's he gonna do? He's gonna need your big sister. Could you help me grab my scarf? You wanna jump up and try to get that scarf? Will you please, will you place the scarf here for me and hold it tight so I can use it to climb the tree and pick those tasty apples? That's a smart, that's a smart bunny I got there. It's a real smart bunny. Just one more. He's taking all the apples off the tree. He's got to get a tummy ache. Great teamwork. I got them all. Can you hang on me? Can you hang on to that scarf for me? Oops, I'm running late. What an uphill battle. He's got to climb up a hill. Gotta climb up a hill with that wagon. Wait a minute. Why am I going uphill? Why am I going uphill? We can fix that. Can you tilt the book for me? I'll tilt it so you can go downhill. Easy as pie. Now my wheels are turning. Maybe going downhill a little too fast there. Why don't we even have more fun? Would you rock the book back and forth? Is 
So now we keep going and get ready to... Oh, what's going to happen now? Turn! Oh my god. Look at that bunny. He's having quite a time here. Uh-oh. Get ready to tumble. Ooh, looks like he hit a rock. Ooh, that's scary, isn't it? Oops. I guess I upset the apple cart. Where are all the apples? All that work and he lost all his apples. That's hard. Here they are. I'll just pick them up. He didn't lose them all. On the road again. What's this? Uh oh. Yeah. Oh boy. Big way to go here. How's he going to get across that? Hey, I think I'm going to need some help. Can you use my scarf to make a bridge? It's a pretty smart bunny. Everybody's here. It's a smart bunny. Perfect. Thank you. I'm at the end of my rope. Good thing I'm almost home. Bunny's got all his apples and he's almost home. I'm stuck. Would you give me a little push? I'm gonna push the bunny so he can get in there? Give him a push? Yeah! <coughs> pop, pop! Right on time for mom's apple pie. Gotta love mom's apple pie. Not a bad apple, apple in the bunch. Yum. I think I can smell that pie from here. Oh, it smells good. <coughs> we saved a piece for you. You want your piece of pie? Want your piece of pie? <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Got another one? Yeah. Got time. Yeah, we're going to roll. Guys, guys like eggs? I like eggs, yeah. I like eggs, too. I always like eggs. It's a good egg. Ooh, that's good. You're lucky to have such a nice sister. I've always been a very good guy. Two you got two sisters? What are their names? Yeah. Emily. Emily. Yeah. I've always been a very good egg. I bet you're wondering, how good, how good can one egg really be? Well, I'll water your plants. I'll change your tires. I'll even paint your house. If you need any help whatsoever, I'm your egg. Yep, I'm a very good egg indeed. What if being too good goes wrong? That egg sounds like a dream. You gotta take care of your house. Oh, hello. I was just rescuing this cat, know why? Because I'm a good egg. A very good egg. He rescues cats. Does anybody have a cat? I got two cats at home. You do too? It's true. I do all kinds of good things. I'll carry your groceries. I'll water your plants. I'll even change your tires. If you need any help whatsoever, I'm your egg. I've always been a good egg. It's been this way from the start even in my earliest days back at the store, at the farmer's market. There were a dozen of us living together under one recycled roof. There was Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and another Frank. It's a lot of eggs. It's a lot of eggs. The other 11 eggs, eggs weren't on their best behavior. They weren't exactly good. They ignored their bedtime. They only ate sugary cereal. Who doesn't like sugary cereal? They threw tantrums. They cried for no reason. They broke their stuff on purpose. Those are some pretty bad eggs. Meanwhile, I tried to take charge. I tried to fix their bad behavior. I tried to keep the peace because I was a good egg. A very good egg. Nobody seemed to care though. Every night I was exhausted, 
My head felt scrambled. Then, one fateful morning, I noticed some cracks in my shell. Yikes! They were everywhere. They were everywhere. That's not good. My doctor said it was from all the pressure I was putting on myself. The pressure of making sure everybody was as good as me. I was cracking up, literally. Something had to change. I'd had enough. Just had enough. Poor guy. I told Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank that I was leaving. I can't be the only good egg in a bad carton, I said. Blah, 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 they replied. I left that night. Egg's off on his own now. I wandered from town to town. The hours became days. The days became weeks. I lost track of time. I was alone. Out there on the road, under the stars, I really tried to focus on myself and what I needed. At least I had a nice hammock there. Get a little bit of sleep. I took walks. I read books. I floated in the river. I wrote in my journal. I found simple moments to be quiet. I breathed in. I breathed out. I even started painting. It's a painting egg. I never knew an egg that painted. I knew eggs that were painted, but I never knew a painting egg. Mommy's like painting egg. Yeah, mommy's good at that. For once, I found time for me. And guess what? Little by little, the cracks in my shell started to heal. My head no longer felt scrambled. I started to feel like myself again. He seems very content there, doesn't he? It's a happy egg. So I made a big decision. I'm returning to my old carton and my friends. Because I'm kind of lonely out here. This time I know what I need to do. I'll try not to worry so much. I'll be good to my fellow eggs while also being good to myself. It's going to be a little less intense, I gather. Here we go. Farmer's Market. He's back. He's back home. Everybody missed me. I miss them too. Hello, Meg. Howdy, Peg. Hey, Greg. Greetings, Clegg. What's up, Shell? Aloha, Shelly. Hey, oh, Sheldon. Hi, Shelby. Good day, Egbert. What's happening, Frank? Howdy do, other Frank. They got a big welcome home sign for him there. He got it made there. Sure, every once in a while, somebody's still a little bit bad, but it's not like before. Here's what I realized. The other eggs aren't perfect, and I don't have to be either. I'm okay with that. You found a little piece there. Yep, the old carton is back together. We're a solid dozen again. It's good to be home. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a very good egg. That was an excellent egg. Uh, Mo Williams. Because. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music. A man named Franz was inspired to create his own. This is, this is back a few years ago with these guys. Because many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music. They formed an orchestra. Because a man had practiced since he was a kid, he was asked to join. That's pretty cool. Remember the orchestra? Because a woman studied night and day, she too was asked to play, because many others loved and practiced their instruments. There were enough musicians. They're putting the band together here. Putting the band together. And so you do at home? No, a cousin Kai plays the violin. Ah, cool violin. That's pretty impressive. Because someone created a poster about Franz's music, tickets were sold. Because the train conductor stopped the train at the great concert hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. 
Can't have an orchestra without a conductor. That's for sure. Because the orchestra's librarian had copies of the score, the orchestra rehearsed. Got to practice a lot if you're in an orchestra. You all got to work together and sound good. Because workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floors, the grand hall was ready. Because the time had come, the ushers opened the door. It's a nice concert hall they have here. Train stops right in front of it, can't beat that. Because someone's uncle caught a cold. Someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. Poor guy missed the concert, but he'll, he'll feel better and someone else gets to go. It's not all bad. Because Yesher helped the aunt and her special guests, they found their seats. Because everyone was there to a beautiful, beautiful music, it was quiet. You guys are good at being quiet too. Mom's laughing, but hey. <laughs> there they are. There they are. Ready to play. Wow. Look at that. You can almost hear the music, can't you? That's pretty cool. In row seat, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful music written by a man named Franz, and it changed her. It looks very comfortable in there. The girl was changed. Let's see what change came over her. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music because it fed her. Soon she started to write music too, because like Franz, the young woman had something to share. Wow, that's being inspired. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. One night her music was discovered because she was also very lucky. Then she was invited to perform her music at the Grand Concert Hall because so many people wanted to hear it. Her composition was dedicated to the uncle in row C, seat 14, because it was his ticket that brought her here. At least she remembered her uncle. World Premiere, Premier Symphony No. 1, The Cold. And that night, that night someone else changed. This, this is how it happens. Pretty cool. Wow. She wrote her own music. That was really cool. Because an unexpected note can change your life. It's very true. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming out. I thank the Chambert Township Library for letting us come here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. How old is your sister? Five. She's five. Okay, well, I got some stuff for you guys. Mom can use a pen. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of you and your sister both. Don't worry about that. There's two pencils for you. And these are a couple of erasers you can have, too. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. There's a couple of erasers, too. Oh, thank you very much. Not that you guys make No. You can loan it to, the, to your seat mate, and uh, I'll take care. You're very welcome. Dad needs a Dad needs a pen. You have other kids at home, or? Oh no. No. Oh, okay. Well, I'll keep you busy anyway. Well, he'll he'll need those in the future. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I didn't know they had story time, so I'm lucky. I That's kind of cool. Yeah. Hi, I'm John Erickson, the manager of the Hoffman Estates Branch Library, and I'm here to announce an exciting new program. Starting in the fall, we're going to have a monthly story time with the mayor. Come in and meet the mayor and listen to some great, colorful, and exciting stories. Uh, further details will follow in the library's program guide and on the village's website. See you then.